sewing a jumpsuit refashion project that's coming up. Hello fashion sewers, I hope you're well. If you're new to the channel, I'm Holly G. Lee and in this episode I'm going to be showing you more detailed information about how to refashion a jacket and a pair of pants into a jumpsuit. On my channel, if you're new to the channel, I do refashioning projects of old and new clothing. I also do sew and tell which is um, where I talk about topics on sewing and the fashion industry and related areas. I also do a outfit of the week which I'm super interested in and I love doing that. So and I also do sewing look books and that is when I do a project from the beginning to ends where I you know, design, I draft and I also sew and then I show them off. And if you're interested in that sort of thing then you definitely need to consider subscribing and let's get started. So yes, this is episode two, episode two for the refashion project for a jumpsuit and it's coming on fine. Um, I hope you enjoyed the first episode where I, I, I gave a lot more information about tips about all the body shapes so that will hopefully help you when you are making yours. So I'm going to try and keep that going throughout the rest of this series So and I'll also share tips that I'm probably not going to do within the project that I'm working on, you know, such as techniques and hopefully the ideas will come through and then, you know, if you have that similar problem with whatever jeans you're working with or jacket you're working with, then hopefully that information will help. So um, in the first episode, I showed you what I was going to do. I tried it on and, you know, aired out some issues. And now in this episode, I'm just going to show you how I'm going to match both together the jacket and also the pants to create the jumpsuit. So if there's any other problems and issues um, then I'm also going to address them in, with you and share that information. So I'm going to put my suit, well it's not a suit yet, it's, <laughs> it's not a jumpsuit yet. So I'm going to put that back on and then I'm going to show you um, where I'm going to pin and making sure that it's comfortable on me and um, yeah that's yeah and everything else. <laughs> So let's get started. Okay, this is the look I decided to go for. I did have options. Let's do a twirl. So you want to know what those options are, that's going to be in episode one and I'll leave a link in the description. So the next thing is then to pin and mark where I'm going to cut and start sewing. So let me share one tip with you though. I will share one tip, just one moment. Okay, just got a prop here. Right, remember when you're doing this, you need to think about when you're sitting down because we do know if you stand up at the moment, so you want to make sure it's going to be comfortable around the back. Maybe not so, so much at the front, but definitely at the back. So I'm just gonna show you, show you my back and you wanna make sure that you're nice and comfortable. So you may want to give yourself a little bit more ease and room in the back. I think I will do that, yeah. And you can always cut it away if it's too much. It's, what, it's better to be too much than too little. So remember to remember to always sit down as well as just working on it when you're stood up. So you just have to remember, you just have to remember it's, it's job suit and you, you, you definitely want ease. And it's best to have too much rather than too little. So, okay, so this is what I was happy with. So I'm going to start pinning, I've got my pins here. So I'm going to put a pin, as it's kind of like back over, I'm going to put a pin here, like so. 
and then I'm going to lift that up and I'm going to put a pin there. You can, you can, you can also use a safety pin as well if you don't like to stick pins into you. I know it's, I know it's got a point as well, but it, it, it's, you know what a safety pin is. <laughs> so there and there, and then I have to work on the back. The joys of uh, doing this yourself. So I'm putting a pin in there, and I'm going to put one just here. And that's in the right place, like so. I think I'll, I'll put, I think I'll put it in the side as well. I think I think that's going to be important just to make sure. So I'm going to do it on this side. So I'm putting it here, and then I'm going to lift and put a pin there. Should be okay. Yep. So yeah, that should be okay. I'm happy with that. So I now need to make sure, not make sure, but if, if I can match up some of the staff features that are in the denim jacket to, you know, perhaps the belt loop or the pocket, see if that's possible. If I can, I will do. And also at the back as well. So that's what I'm going to do next. I do have one more tip to share though. Um, and this is where I was taking it off. I did actually pin into my top. So be very careful that if you are pinning into your top, you know, when you're taking it off, just be very careful because the pins can come out. So I just had to do a bit of re readjusting. So that's one another tip that I'm sharing with you now. So I'm going to bring the camera down so you can have a look at the jacket. The pants are fine for a moment, so we're just going to focus just on the jacket. Okay, so here are the pins. So this is going to be the stitch line, and this is where it kind of bags over that pinning there. So we're going to focus on this area here. So this is going to be the front. Okay, mm -hmm side okay that's fine I'm just gonna make sure it's in half and that's the back there that's the back seam there and that probably be less yeah it is and that's good I'm just gonna take it down just a bit more just to be on the safe side that's gonna be my stitch line so and then I'm going to put one sleeve into the other I just want to make sure it's nice and flat so because it's a refashion project doesn't mean you want things to be not perfect well, I don't I like my things when I'm sewing yeah I'm not, I'm not necessarily after perfection but I just want to make sure it's done well I suppose that's Anyway, moving on. Okay, so I'm gonna put that pin in there. The side seam in there. And the front. I'm gonna bring that down just a tad because of the buttonhole here. This buttonhole there. I just put my finger through. So, yeah. So I need to cut below there. Mm. See, this is a problem. The button is how close could I get to that? I can't remove it. Anyway, we'll we'll address that when I come to. So, so I'm gonna follow with the button here, where that ends. So that'll come there. And because I'm bagging this out, that's the reason why the button's going to be a issue. But um, if you are 
you know, having a much more fitted look and you're not backing it out, then, you know, you can always make sure you go halfway in between, you know, or even more so that you don't have to have worry about the button fastening. So yeah, that's fine. I can take these pins out now because they were just marking to make sure that I was happy with the effect that I was going for. So now all I need to do is then cut. <gasps> this is the scary part. Yeah. I'm going, to I'm going to turn it this way so that I can have a better bird's eye view. So I've got my scissors and I'm going to give myself 2.5 centimetres, which is an inch, in order to do my cut line. So I've got my chart, let's get my marker. Okay, so let's start cutting. I'm all turning back now. There we go. Remove my pins. Okay. So let's see what issues and problems we may have with joining this to the pants. Let me just show you the pants to begin with. So this is all the hardware that is coming with these particular style of jeans. So and the reasons why I'm not cutting into it because I'd have a smaller pocket for a start and you know getting these rivets out can be a pain so I want to match up style features these seams if I can within the pants okay yeah, I think that's gonna work Yes, that's so going to work. See, the problem is going to be the button area. So we're going to have to rethink that. But that lines up beautifully. So I'm going to get my pin and put a pin here. Like so. That's really nice, actually. That, that does line up pretty well. Just a little bit this way. You can get a sound seam to. No, the sound seam isn't going to match up. The sound seam in the pants. So I'm going to put a pin matching up the side seams. Like so, there we go. It just means I, think I probably may have to just ease that in and get a bit of gathering like that. Let's just turn towards the back and we'll start with the back seam here. 
and just line that up because it's elasticated at the back I think it's going to work for me it's going to be an advantage <laughs> hopefully and just pin that into place so when I come to sew this yeah that should be okay okay I'm going to put another pin here making sure I'll just go through the one layer and I'm going to put another pin here to put that inside just just that just a little side seams there and that one okay see I'm stretching and yeah it's it's getting there so I'm going to put a pin here so that will hopefully be okay and turn to the front again and this is where the problem is going to be uh, buttons clashing with the pants and the jacket meet up so I put that there and put a pin in like so now it's just a fastening now isn't it Solve the problem there. No, it's, it's a bit, it's not impossible. Okay. No, yeah, that's, that's not too much hard work. I think that's, I'm happy with that. That works. Yes, is there's enough of a shank at the bottom here for both of them? Yeah, that's fine. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with that. It's a bit different. Hmm. Okay, so we're happy with this side, and it's just this side. Okay. It's just this rivet, this button uh, that I need to get rid of, and then it wouldn't be a problem. So I think I'm going to have to figure a way of actually removing this. That's the only solution. That's the only solution for that. And then I wouldn't have any problems attaching it to the waistband. So I went, I'm back. I went to go and see if I can find a pair of pliers and I couldn't find any. I've got a little tiny pair that, uh, that I have for jewelry, but um, that wouldn't do the job with these heavy duty buttons on these jeans. So I need, we need, I need to think of another solution. And I think I've come up with one that I, I will be happy with. But if you can find pliers, 
then it's just a case of just removing the buttons and it's going to be a lot more easier doing that. So I'll bring the camera down so that you can see what I'm going to do. So I'm going to pull that part there. I'm going to cut into the seam here. Yeah, it'll be okay. Actually, I'm going to go just below the button here. Oh my goodness. Hope this works. Yeah. Like so, and I'm going to cut around it. Is it any best way? That would have been a big enough. I'm going to get some smaller scissors. Would have been a big hole in there anyway. Just make sure you go very gently around. Just cutting it. I just want to get as close to the button as I possibly can. These are things that you need to do when you're refashioning. Just go really slowly because you don't want to cut any further than the button area. There we go. It is removed. Oh, a big hole. So all I'm going to do is when I go on my sewing machine, I'm just going to do a very small zigzag to hold that in place. See, that's a kind of more or less kind of hole you would have had if you used pliers. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> so I'm going to zigzag that into place and then, yes, that's nice and flat now. So that'll be the next thing to go to your sewing machine and give that a good zigzag. Okay, so I'm now ready to repair this snip. I've got a little bit of fabric here that came from the cut off from the bottom. I'm just going to put that underneath here. That just enables me to have better handling of keeping them together and making sure that I don't sew my fingers because I'm going to be sewing quite close so I've set it to a zigzag put my foot down needle down okay, let me just just a whisk there a little bit okay Needle down and then start sewing. Okay, stop. Let's check that. I'm happy with it. Yeah. And and reverse. And then forward again. And then stop and do this. Yes, I'm happy with that. That's good. So just need to get my scissors and then cut this section away here and then turn it to the back and then just trim that away as well. Take it over to my table and then I'll show you in a bit more detail. Okay, so there it is, nice and strong. That's the back of it. 
So I'm just going to put that back into position like so, matching up the front, the centre front, and then put a pin there. May have a bit of a problem when I come to sew, but we'll work around that even if it means hand sewing. <laughs> so there we go. But I think I'll I'll use um, a zipper foot because it's an arrow foot and that will be a lot better. Okay, so now let's just just arrange that a little bit. See how it goes. See how everything's going. Okay, that's fine because we're going to cut that away and then it's going to be the double. Yeah, yeah, I think that's going to be fine. All right, I've got my tape measure out just checking to make sure that I'm happy with. the placement of the waistband. We want it to be all even, don't we? So what I'm doing here is just checking that the waistband is going to be even on both sides. Three here, through there. Yeah, that's fine. That's great. Let's put that pin back in place. So now I'm going to do a row of stitching all the way around at the top, and then a row of stitching underneath to secure that into place. Oh, what I haven't done, and I should have done that before actually putting it onto the pants, is to overlock. The raw edge or surge the raw edge. Um, actually, my, my overlock, <laughs> she's not behaving at the moment. Um, so, do that overlock first, surge first before attaching the jacket to the pants. But if you know, if you or zigzag if you ha don't have a surge or overlocker, um, and if you like me, then um, you can also do it once it's on, once you've sewn it together, then you can also zigzag and um, overlock so and um, obviously that's what I'm going to be doing so I'm going to take that to the sewing machine now I'm making my first stitch put down needle down and making sure I've got the right stitch length and forward Stop down again. Just got to go through all that bulk and then reverse. And then okay. Just go really slow. Because remember if you like me just using pins, you want to make sure that you don't get <laughs> the pin sticking into you. And I'm gonna keep this part straight. Because there's no elastication in this part, and this is starting to have elastication here. And I'm going to have to do a bit of gathering as well. I've just kept with my normal foot. That's <laughs> meaning that's mean to change. I hope it's not going to cause an issue. And take that one out. Oops. There we go. Right. My machine should be able to go over. That is really bulky. My machine should be able to manage. Fingers crossed. If yours doesn't, just go slowly and just help it speed it through. OK. 
Okay, stop there. Now this is where the tricky part comes in, isn't it? It's, it's, it's the side seams matching that up. So I'm just gonna, you see how it was like that? I am then just going to kind of finally gather, gather it here like this just by hand. Just like that. That's quite nice, that's a nice arrangement. So I can keep the side seams more or less in line and just go really slowly. If it starts to move, just get back in there and just hold it in position. Both hands. Stop. Okay, remove my knee pin and start stretching this out a little bit more. Keep my needle down. So keep your needle down and then make any necessary adjustments. You see, just keep the adjustments like that. I'm holding on to the centre back here, so the centre back seam is my, is on par with the centre back seam in the pants. So, and then I'm just making sure I've got the gathers even, more or less towards the side, put down and then just keep sewing, just going slowly. speed up just a little. Mm, it's really bulky here. Use my hand wheel. And then use my hand wheel. So if you're having this problem, just use a hand wheel and let you do the work instead of letting your sewing machine do the work just to get over the really bulky parts so you don't break your needle. Be careful of your eyes. Yeah, it must be. Health and safety while sewing. Right, that's I'm happy with that. Okay. I'll just continue sewing now. the way I'm not sewing the pants to the jacket accidentally. Okay, so we've come to the pin here that needs to be removed and a little bit of gathering that needs to happen in this section here. Okay. Please stop. I'm going to slow it down because I'm coming over a bulky section. The slower it goes, then the 
the more success you'll have not breaking your needle Okay. Stop pinning out and I'm on the final lap. Okay. Just moving out guys into that section because there's no elastication in this elastication there so I just want to make sure that fullness has remained on that section. Okay, needle down. So really all is about going slowly when you need to and stopping here and because I'm coming to a bulky part it's best to go slowly because you don't want to break your needle slow that down so until I get over this point Okay, and going to finish here. And just be just a little. my foot I'm gonna go really slow now because I didn't change my foot so let's see if I can do this yes stop all right oh. Colleen you should have changed your foot so I am just going to use my hand wheel actually it isn't really touching the button but this is what you do when you need when you forget to change your foot this is easy hand wheel
Okay. And now I'm going to, I could change it for at this point, but <laughs> to be honest, I'm just too lazy to do that right now. So I am going to, let me see. Let me see if I should have, if I should have actually changed my foot. All right, so just give it some help there. That's coming out. Okay. Needle down. Okay, stop. And I'm going to help it just a little bit to get under there because of all that bulk. Down. And go really slowly. Up it along. Yes, I don't need my zipper foot. The stop. So I'm just sewing into the, the original stitch line. And I'm going to speed up a little bit. I think I can do with. Let me just stop checking my work, make sure it's all flat underneath. Yep, yeah, it's fine. And speed it up and then just keep sewing. I've got rivets that I need to be careful of. Maybe it wasn't such a good idea keeping the regular foot on. working and checking your work underneath, making sure that it's not caught in any way. Okay. Now I would advise you to use a zipper foot. It may still interfere a little bit with the with it, but you probably feel a lot more comfortable using a zipper for it. It feels okay, actually. I don't feel as though it's hindering the performance of the stitching whatsoever, but it's an option, and it's always good to have options, isn't it? from the shop you don't want to be having any injuries. Stop. I'll work again.
final leg. Okay, we're coming to the end now. Okay, it's fine. Let's go a bit slow because it is quite bulky there. Yes, it's great. I'm happy with that. Okay, we'll take it over to the table and examine it. Okay. Yes, it's starting to look like a jumpsuit. That is looking good. So, this is the front. And this is the back. I'm happy with that. It wasn't too difficult. Yeah, really happy with that. Just need to trim off my threads. I want to have a look on the inside. Yeah, that's fine. Happy with that. Yeah. Like I said, I just need to overlook. Oh, I sewed. I sewed down the label. I'll cut that out. <laughs> I should have cut the label off before I began. But no, that's fine. I'm going to give that a quick try on before I do anything. And then we need to just, the button there is okay for getting onto there. Yeah, I think that's okay. Yeah, happy with that. Happy. Okay, in the next episode, we're going to finish off the inner side, neaten that off and I'm going to try it on and also going to style it for you. So it's been a pretty successful project. Let me just say that I know that I said I was going to use a, a zipper foot. If you feel comfortable just using the regular foot then go ahead but if you don't then the other option is to use a zipper foot because it's a very narrow foot. Do be careful of the rib, um, rivets if you have rivets in your in, in your jeans and yeah what else so slowly and any difficult parts any bulky parts then just use the hand wheel that will be the best approach to this kind of technique because you don't want to have any broken needles because you don't want the needles to get lost in your in your garment or you know come anywhere near your face so do bear that in mind so like i said in episode three which is going to be the final episode and um, we'll do the finishing touches i'll try it on and style it for you and it will be complete so if you're new to the channel consider subscribing if you enjoyed this episode please give it a thumbs up and please do share and I will see you in the next episode